So first of all, I want to thank uh, our SJD students for organizing this series of interviews and the conference. I think is absolutely fantastic, and uh, and LM students work with them. They're very creative and a good thing, a good repository of information. So on the great challenges facing legal education, well, there are many. Uh, let me mention a few that I think globalization poses. So one is everyone speaks about uh, making curricula in this country and elsewhere more international, more reflective of globalization, but I hope people will press that uh, fully, not simply uh, by uh, projecting their own existing uh, imagination and frameworks about law to global topics, but to actually see the challenges uh, posed by the way in which other people think about legal issues. What do I mean by that? Uh, I think there are sort of deeper uh, structural or conceptual challenges posed by uh, globalization. So simply adding, for example, 10 more courses taught by uh, people all from the, uh, the same background, same nationality, is not itself necessarily, possibly but not necessarily, uh, a thoroughgoing globalization. So for example, what does the experience of, of China or Brazil or uh, other societies truly mean how we think uh, very deeply about legal issues? So that's for me, one major challenge. Second major challenge is we, of course, uh, in the US being an economically advanced uh, society and having uh, a, a very significant number of lawyers think of legal education uh, very much as concerning lawyers, judges, and other legal professionals. But I think one might want to cast one's net a little bit more widely uh, and think about uh, more popular legal education in addition to legal education for highly advanced professionals. Uh, many parts of the world there are real questions, and indeed even in the U.S. to some case, uh, some extent, uh, uh, questions about access to justice and whether highly specialized professionals are the only or best way to get there. So I think we want to cast our frame a little more broadly than we do. I think a third tension that globalization poses, but also posed by other uh, concerns, is um, uh, that of the interplay of the theoretical and the more practical. And I think when law schools are doing uh, uh, their work best, uh, it's, it, it's perhaps the most exciting place in the university to be because we see ideas and the translation of those, those ideas into action uh, coming about. Uh, that's when law schools are making things mesh. But they don't always mesh, and so sometimes the theoretical and the more practical uh, exist in parallel universes. And so I think uh, globalization is one uh, challenge of globalization, one area where uh, uh, that meshing needs to occur even even more thoroughly than it does. So I would say those are the three major challenges. Of course, there's always the overlay of um, who's going to pay for things, and uh, uh, whether it's uh, the, the shrinking of the public uh, sector funding of legal education around the world or increased reliance on fundraising or whatever, there, there are profound questions uh, of who pays and how much burden students bear, but that obviously is not simply a globalization issue. Well, the measures might well uh, not be the same in every country in the world because the structure of legal education, the age of students, the type of faculty, uh, the nature of the experience, its length, et cetera, may vary from country to country, so I can't really give you a single uniform prescription for the whole world. I think here in the U.S., um, I would love to see um, uh, yet further uh, uh, integration of international and U.S. students. I uh, very much welcome seeing more courses taught either jointly or by people who uh, have had their formative legal educational experience not solely inside the United States. So that a course, for example, uh, perhaps taught by people with different backgrounds uh, uh, might elicit a broader range of uh, thinking about the sort of deep underlying that always fully self-conscious structures in form are thinking about, about law. That's not to say, by the way, that everything is relative, that, that there are not some things that are universal, but I still think in terms of, uh, of uh, institutional design and the way that law uh, uh, is reflective of and shapes society, that there, there, there are going to be some differences that, that it would be worth taking account of to enrich the student experience. 
Well, I've been fortunate to have taught um, not simply in the U.S., but but in, particularly in China and elsewhere abroad. Um, hard to predict, of course, how the world uh, uh, map is um, uh, changing in that regard. I, I do uh, hope again there's more cross uh, pollinization of ideas. I, in saying all that, I, I do think it's important to hold tight to what uh, we, at least here in the U.S., hold tight to what I think we do best. And so, um, so for example, I have some skepticism about too readily uh, opening up campuses around the world, uh, about assuming that uh, uh, every single last thing has to uh, reflect uh, globalization as such. I mean, I, I think what we do best here in terms of uh, really pressing students to uh, realize their full potential draw, uh, hone their analytical skills, uh, that we should not lose hold of. Uh, again, that, that's not inconsistent with my idea of pushing people to think hard about their deepest assumptions and why they hold those assumptions and whether they are historically contingent or indeed universal. Um, but I think um, it's important, particularly in given the larger economic picture uh, now and in the foreseeable future, um, to, to, I think, be very judicious about uh, how one goes about doing this. Uh, th th that's another way of saying, perhaps, that there are um, uh, some efforts at uh, uh, globalization which strike me as uh, 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 sort of thin and maybe driven not by deep uh, academic values, uh, but by other kinds of concerns. So I think it's exciting in China to see what's underway. When I first went to China uh, uh, to study legal education, I'd been there before, but when I first went in 1982, 30 years ago, sent by Ford Foundation to write a report on uh, what was called a needs assessment, that was the language used, of uh, Chinese legal education. There were, at that time, 12 law schools in China. They had just resumed post-cultural revolution. None of them had any substantial number of faculty. Uh, and now there's over 650 institutions in China that offer uh, a degree of one type or another in law. Now that doesn't, n numbers, we should not assume that numbers are, are, are indicative of quality anywhere in the world. Um, and it may be, as some of my Chinese friends in legal education say, that there are too many law schools in China offering uh, uh, degrees in law. But I think it's an exciting time, and I think some of the most vibrant thinking in China about institutional design and possibilities for uh, a constructive reform are coming from uh, extremely smart legal academics. And so I think it's, uh, in general, a uh, hopeful and exciting time in China. I, I was struck when in China last summer, meeting with several uh, friends of mine who are now deans of leading Chinese law schools, uh, struck by their uh, uh, hopefulness and their ambition. They were speaking in some ways akin to uh, U.S. law school deans uh, 20 or 30 years ago in terms of uh, uh, money is not an object, we will do the best we can, we're glad to hire smart young people no matter where they're from. And so that part was uh, uh, very exciting. I do think quite deeply though, having said that, that uh, people in the U.S. and elsewhere should not assume a path of a ready and easy convergence. The fact that China is growing and expanding and developing its legal institutions does not mean that they will necessarily converge to what U.S., uh, comparable U.S. institutions are like. I think in some ways they uh, will and should remain uh, distinct. Um, it's often the case that people here uh, assume everything will converge to, to, to our point. I do think there are big challenges that Chinese legal educators and legal institutions, legal academic institutions face regarding uh, issues of academic freedom. And I think uh, for the true greatness of China to be fully unleashed, it will be important for the atmosphere to become one uh, more conducive, uh, even than it is now, to a broader ranging, uh, fuller, uh, freer academic inquiry.